I mean, this was a huge win. First and foremost, I want to put that out there because this was much like we couldn't get over the hurdle with the Eagles for the past four or five years. We really were seem to be cursed by the Cowboys as well. There were like two or three games where we had it in the bank and should have won and we didn't and, uh, you know, ended up getting gutted towards the end. So this was another huge win because it meant that we're, we're like, say what you will about curses and whatnot, but we broke the curse. We broke the curse against the Eagles with our win, our home win and the second uh, go round this season. And we broke the curse against the Cowboys We're we're six and 10 doesn't feel like a huge improvement over five and 11 or four and 12 or what have you. But, um, this is a different six and 10 team. Okay. And I think anyone who, who watched every game, every play watched Joe judge speak, watched the players speak. It knows that. So I'll just put that out there. Cowboys have allowed 20 plus points in 14 games this season, the most such games in a single season of franchise history. So we knew coming in that they stink against the run. They were last in the league in defensive rushing yards allowed per game, 161 per game. Uh, They were 30th in points allowed per game. So if there was ever a time for the offense to break out and feel itself and shake loose of the uh, red zone blues, this was it. The Giants scored 20 plus points for the first time in their last six games. It's a five game drought. That was the longest single season drought streak, ironically, since 2016, the last time that we went to the playoffs with an 11 5 record and Ben McAdoo at the helm. And that was on the, on the wings of our defense. So it feels like we had a similar season to 2016. It's just the, the ball didn't go our way in five games that they did go our way. In 2016, we averaged more than six yards per play, while Dallas averaged less than four yards per play. We got six sacks, so the pass rush stepped up. And yeah, the haters will say it was a banged up offensive line. They're missing Lyle Collins and Tyrone Smith and and Zach Martin and blah, 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 blah. Still, I mean, they were missing the same players in the first go round, and we, we didn't get it. Near, we didn't get even close to the amount of sacks that we had this this time. And this might be the only game that we won with 23 points and a 0% third down efficiency. <laughs> well, that's just bizarre. And that indicates to me that we either just didn't get to third down. And uh, when we did, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of crazy looking at that stat and knowing that Dallas converted 35% of the time when we converted zero. Whoa. Uh, it, it felt like we had this game under control for the majority of the first half. And we did. And we, we, it, was, it was us beating ourselves. It was our mistakes that were letting them back in the game. I mean, their first, the first drive that resulted in points for them, six plays, seven net yards. And it was because Daniel Jones like, didn't know how to hand off to Wayne Gallman. You know, I, I know in the broadcast, like, Aikman wanted to pin that on Gallman. But you look at it and it's like, dude, just put it in his bread basket. Why are you sticking it in, uh, uh, up by his like, throat? Um, we forced their defense force three, three and outs in a row after that. And then, of course, towards the end of the half is where we, uh, our defense tends to, to fall apart and break down. We allowed two field goals towards the end there to, to get the score to 20 to 9. Um, but our opening drive, I mean, I tweeted this out, it was like per, pure perfection. Every, almost every play call was on point. I mean, the end around is Sterling Shepard for the touchdown, you know, the pass patterns, the pass routes that, that uh, Garrett dialed up were, were great. The scripted drive was about as good as it can go. And then, um, you know, the fumble really set us back. That really crushed our momentum on the second drive. That really, you know, it just gave Dallas life. This game should not have been 23-19. I mean, you know, and I know there are a lot of people saying that, like, oh, well, you know, Dallas probably should have won the game because, you know, if they had a, a capable coach instead of Mike McCarthy, they would have known to go for two instead of one. And if they get that, then they would have been tied towards the end of the game. And then if they challenged the Dante Pettis catch on that last drive where Gano hits the long field goal, they probably would have been, uh, the the catch would have been overturned and then the Giants the punt and they don't score. And so then the Cowboys have the opportunity to score, kick the game winning field goal 23, 20 very easily could have seen that happen, but there's no reason that the Cowboys should have been in the game in the first place but it's because of stupid mistakes like the the um, the handoff, mix up, mess up, and then Evan Engram, dude. I mean, just Evan Engram. <laughs> Evan fucking Engram. You know, 
open. Jones puts it right where you need to put it, right in the mitts, and it goes somehow goes through his hands and bounces up and gets intercepted, and that leads to points. I mean, you know, it's like breathe life, you know, because coming out of the coming out in the second half, the, the Cowboys go three and out. Didn't even didn't even spend a minute off the clock, and then we gave the ball right back with that interception in our territory, and they go down and they score a touchdown. And so now it's 2016. You know, it's just like, ah. and then there was another, there was another drop that he had that would have been a first down that would have extended a drive that killed an opportunity for points. So fucking Evan Ingram, dude, <laughs> he's just so insanely maddening. Jones played another great game, 720, 17 to 25, 229, two touches and an interception that, I mean, you shouldn't put on him. That's goes in the Evan Ingram column. Uh, Wayne Gallman, 11 carries, 65 yards. For almost average six yards a carry, which is great to see. And despite Daniel Jones trying to throw up a smoke screen and saying that he won't be as mobile as he usually is, he did run the ball nine times for 17 yards. So it's like probably still a little rusty there in terms of trying to like run the ball. Sterling Shepard, what a goddamn game. 10 targets, eight catches, 112 for a touch. I, I, I love the guy. And I never want to speak ill of him because he he catches everything. And he's just a great player to have on the field. He's just not a number one. But if we can get him in the appropriate system with some complimentary receivers, because right now Slayton's kind of like your deep threat, right? Your speed, he's he's your speed demon. He's going to get vertical attack downfield, right? And they have Shep kind of in the in the middle range underneath type stuff and then i don't know engram <laughs> i don't know what you do with engram dante pettis though he stepped up two targets two catches 43 yards and a touchdown i mean the touchdown he, he got i mean dan danny hit him right in the fucking grill so <laughs> it's a good thing he held on to it even though it's like he kind of uh, lost the ball there towards the end it looks like he might be a dependable three or four feels like golden tate's not part of the team anymore he missed the final, I don't even know how many games, uh, was not putting up great numbers when he was in the lineup, was not getting a lot of snaps, like less than 50% of snaps. So it's hard to justify unless he decides to take a pay cut and he's like, you know what? I feel good about this team. I want to be part of a winner. I feel like this, we will be a winner and I'll, I'm willing to take a pay cut. I just, it's hard to justify paying him that much money when he's not, he's like the number three and could be the number four receiver. Yikes. Slayton, nah, four targets, two catches, 22 yards. Uh, Engram, four targets, two catches, 17 yards. And you know, those two big drops that uh, one killed a drive or both killed drives, but one led to a turnover that led to points for the other team. Why don't we throw to Caden Smith more? I saw that being thrown around. Why don't we throw to Levine Talolo more? You know, we've had such red zone troubles. Why are we not utilizing some of the guys that are not kind of your top of mind targets? like Caden Smith, like Levine Tololo, where are they down near the goal line in the red zone? Why are we not utilizing them? Because, you know, in this, and what reminded me of this was, I think it was the Packers-Bears game that I watched where they went five wide, no backs, uh, shotgun, Rodgers. Uh, it looks like Chicago's playing some kind of like Tampa 2 where they're, they're pressing. They don't have anyone really deep. And they had like a linebacker on a tight end or something like that. And the, and the tight end just attacks right down the middle of the field. You know, Rodgers hits him in stride, touchdown. And it, it was not Tanyan who or who uh, probably should have been in the Pro Bowl over Ingram, but it was like their other tight end. It's like you just got to utilize, I think, outside the bun, dude. Um, the Wayne Gallman fumble at the end, like uh, almost, uh, I mean, I, <laughs> I can't imagine what the neighbors thought because I just lost my gourd. I was screaming at the top of my lungs like I couldn't believe it. And uh, so happy that there was some definitive proof on the replay that you could see him at the bottom of the ball. But good God, dude. And he just stripped himself. No no one hit you, non-contact. Like you literally were running and somehow like literally stripped yourself. So boy, oh boy. Uh, Xavier McKinney with the, well, I guess, yeah, the game winning, game clinching interception in the end zone. It's good to see him to get a pick. He was like the highest graded defensive player for the Giants against the Browns, which I thought he played well. I think he played okay against Baltimore. And then, um, yeah, he had another great game here. So it's, it's, and with 
Logan Ryan signing the three-year extension on Christmas Day. It's a Christmas miracle. Oh, my God. Um, it'll be interesting to see how things will play out, but it's like you got to feel good about our secondary right now. McKinney, Ryan, Peppers, Julian Love now filling in on the CB2 for Isaac Yitam, who didn't see, I think he saw a snap on Sunday. And Julian Love played fairly well. I mean, this is not, I know Dalton's not like Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers, Pat Mahomes type level, but he's still the best backup quarterback out there because he's probably not a backup quarterback. Quarterback. He was a starter for so many years. And he, it's not like he's, uh, this is his first game off the bench. He's been playing like pretty much the entire season almost. So, but still, you're facing Michael Gallup. I mean, they tore up the Eagles. Michael Gallup, CD Lamb, Mari Cooper. That's a hard trio of receivers to beat. Probably the best trio of receivers in the league, I would think. I would put them up against just about anyone. And we, we, and we didn't, we didn't let them burn us. I mean, they had a, they had a handful of, they each had a handful of catches. But none of them, none of them surpassed 100 yards. Uh, I don't think any of them got into the end zone that I remember. But you know, if you can contain them, keep the catches in front of you. You know, I'm not, I'm still not a fan of this. Like uh, the bend, the bend, but do not break on every single drive. Kind of kills me. <laughs> and it, you know, I think that's what you saw maybe against the Browns and the Ravens. Didn't, the Ravens just broke us. They were like, oh, this. This is how far you bend. Check this out and just snapped us in two. And they didn't even, and then the Ravens didn't even beat us with, with throwing. They just, they just ran all over us, which is supposed to be our strength. We're our run defense, but not against Baltimore. Baltimore is going to be a problem in the postseason, but our defense stepped up big time. Tay Crowder, Mr. Irrelevant with 11 tackles, a tackle for loss. Blake Martinez was saying that he has been an amazing uh, guy to have next to him. In the in the defensive backfield, says that he's able to. He's for a rookie. He has his head on straight, and he's got a level head, and he's actually able to teach Blake Martinez some things. I mean, that is high praise coming from Blake Martinez, a, a guy that arguably should be in the Pro Bowl, maybe even be in the conversation for All Pro. Although, the more I think about it, the more it's like, well, he's, they say he's a tackling machine. It's like, yeah, but the reason why he has so many tackles is because he maybe he's not good in coverage. He lets his guy get open. He lets his guy catch the ball, and then he immediately tackles the guy. And it's like, so if he's targeted five times and he lets, you see what I'm saying? So I can see that argument, but at the same time, I'm still glad to have him. And he he deserves to be a captain. He got a sack and a tackle for loss. Leonard Williams, dude, earn your paycheck. Holy fuck. Seven tackles, three sacks, three tackles for loss. Ooh, baby. He's the first Giants defensive tackle with 10 plus sacks in a single season since Keith Hamilton in 2000. That is... That's some great company right there. So I say, let's give it our best shot. Let's try and sign him, re-sign him. I think he he showed enough uh, this season, you know, with a full season under his belt in Patrick Graham's defense, that he he's worth the money. the The issue is that you still need a pass rusher. So even though he did have what was it eleven and a half sacks, uh, it still felt like you need if you can just get one more pass rusher on the edge. We'll go from, you know, what we are, what we're like the 12th scoring defense. We're kind of just outside the playoff range, but we're a little above average. We'll go to a top five, top 10 defense for sure across the board. If we can get that in place. Julian Love had a great game. James Bradbury, another great game. Although we had what, two, three dropped interceptions? <sighs> Cannot have that happen. I saw Julian Love tweeted that he needs to get on the jugs machine. I was like, that's pretty funny, dude. Appreciate that. <laughs> so I think we're set in the secondary. Graham Gano with a missed extra point almost came back to bite us in the ace. Riley Dixon has kind of fallen off. Two punts out of five inside the 20, although he had like, I think he had two more opportunities and didn't get it done. So it's not how I wanted him to end up, but he's still better than what we've had in the past. Great effort by the defense. Offense played somewhat better. You know, I think Jones, you know, did all he could. It's just Evan Ingram is just figure it out, man. Figure it out. 